Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, I'll show you how to create a customizable avatar component for your design system using the latest Figma properties. Let's begin by defining our requirements for the avatar component. Alright, let's define the requirements for our avatar component. We'll have two types of avatars. Alphabet avatar, this avatar will display the first letter of the user's name or specified initial. It will come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. Image avatar, users can upload their own profile pictures, and will display these images as avatars. Similar to the alphabet avatar, this type will also be available in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. Now, in addition to the two types of avatars and three different sizes for each type, we have some additional features to consider. Hover properties, will add interactive hover effects to make the avatars more engaging. When users hover over an avatar, it could show additional information or highlight the avatar in some way. Text display, for the alphabet avatar, will include an option to show the user's name or username along with the initial. This can provide more context and personalization. Alright, let's proceed with creating our avatar components. First, we'll start with the alphabet avatar, where we'll display the first letter of the user's name inside a 24x24 pixel rectangle. With the type tool, I am inserting the letter A, which represents the initial letter of the name. I have chosen the inter font with a font size of 16 pixels. Alright, I'm moving forward. I'll employ the rectangle tool to craft a 24 pixel square. This square will serve as the backdrop for the text. Next, I'll align the text and the square accordingly. Additionally, I'll ensure that the rectangle is positioned behind the text. I'll add the text in the center of the rectangle and give it rounded corners. With both items currently chosen, I'll be utilizing the auto layout feature. Feel free to use the shortcut, Shift plus A, if you prefer. Next, I'll be setting all the properties of the auto layout to a value of zero. This includes applying zero pixels for horizontal spacing and setting zero as the padding on all sides. Now, let's change the properties to make the width fixed at 24 pixels, maintaining a square shape. I'll also adjust the colors to make it visually appealing. Next, let's create the medium alphabet avatar with a size of 32 by 32 pixels. The text automatically aligns in the center, which is great. For the large alphabet avatar, we'll set the size to 48 by 48 pixels. Now, let's move on to adding hover effects to our avatars. Instead of creating separate variants, we'll use Figma's absolute position properties and text properties to achieve this. When hovering over the avatar, I want to show an extra background. By adding two pixels of padding, we can create this effect. To achieve the hover effect, I'm generating an additional box and positioning it behind the primary text box. After aligning all the elements to the center, I will set the dimensions of the hover box to 28 pixels for both height and width. To maintain visual consistency with the text box, I'll also be applying a corner radius of 5 pixels to the hover box. This ensures that the hover states appear consistent with the text box design. I'm proceeding to modify the hover background color, aiming for a hue that closely resembles that of the main box. Next, I will duplicate the hover box to correspond with each distinct sized avatar. Additionally, I will change the size of these duplicated boxes by an increment of plus 4 pixels in comparison to the dimensions of the avatar boxes.
At this point, we possess two components for each avatar, the avatar box and the hover box. Moving forward, we will employ Figma's absolute position property to change their positioning. To implement absolute positioning, start by selecting both items and applying auto layout. No need to concern yourself with spacing and padding at this moment. Subsequently, choose the hover box and locate the absolute position icon on the top right. Click on it. Now, the task is to align the hover box with the center of the avatar box. Utilize the align tools, you begin by aligning them horizontally to the center and then align them vertically to the center. As a result, you'll notice the hover box positioned atop the avatar box. To complete the arrangement, send the hover box below the avatar box layer. Now, replicate this procedure for both the medium and large sizes. I will now include the name text for the small avatar. That was my requirement. To do this, I'll type in the name, James Anderson, who happens to be my favorite English cricket player. Subsequently, I'll integrate this name with the avatar box, ensuring that the original avatar box is selected. The hover box will automatically be included when the avatar box is selected. Afterwards, I'll apply auto layout, thus grouping all the elements together. To finalize the layout, I'll add a spacing of 8 pixels. Your design is now ready. The text-based avatars are now prepared. To proceed, I will create copies of these elements in order to generate image-based avatars. I will proceed to remove the existing text and insert images into the avatar boxes. Great, we're all set to move forward and transform these into components. To make this, I will select all the elements. From the top menu, I'll use the Create Multiple Components feature and combine them as variants. Let's proceed to rename the components to Avatar and add some component properties. I will add two variant properties. The first one will define the type of avatar. And the second one will specify the size. And then add correct labels to each of the variants. All right, I have completed the component properties configuration. Moving on, I'll proceed to add properties to the hover box and name text. These properties will remain hidden within the main component and can be activated whenever necessary. Choose the hover box and introduce a layer property from the panel on the right side. This property will function as a boolean toggle. By default, I will set it to false for visibility, ensuring it remains concealed within the main component. Let's apply this procedure to all the variants. Employ the identical property for all the different variants. Now, perform a similar action for the name text layer. We intend to keep them separate from the main component.
Additionally, I will include a text property for the name, allowing us to modify the name directly from the property panel. All right, let's arrange the variant and test it. Indeed, the outcome aligns with our expectations, and we've successfully crafted a flawless avatar component. I trust this video proved to be informative for you. If it did, consider sharing it with your fellow design enthusiasts. In the upcoming episodes of this series, I will guide you through the process of creating various other components for your design system. Until then, take care and see you next time. Thank you for watching.